we're back. It's like day five or something. I have no idea. Anyways, but when it's one week, I'll be sure to tell you. So, well, now um, I really wanted to continue the videos on posture, right? Like how to hold your instrument and those kinds of things. Like what quote unquote good posture is. But I don't really have like four cameras. And that, I think that would be really what I would need to like show everything that I would like to show. And I don't have four cameras and yeah, but until then, until I get like about four cameras, then I'll go like redo these videos on posture or something. But uh, in the meantime, we'll just skip over from the left hand because we've been working really intensively. On what, well, not be like playing anything on the left hand, but just like I guess basics of the left hand, right? So now we can go to basics of the right hand. It's all the right hand holds the bow. I mean, I, I hope you know that. And I, I mean, if you want to learn left-handed violin, by all means, I mean, it's the other way around, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, so we're going to start with a pencil. Um, the main reason, just a pencil. Any type of pencil is fine. The main reason we start with a pencil is because the bow is actually a violin. The frog is much heavier than the rest of the bow, right? And so because it's much heavier, it's a little bit uneven. And practicing things that are uneven is a little bit, I mean, a waste of time, right? It's like trying to balance. It's much easier to balance on a flat surface than it is to balance on something that's like tilted, right? So the main reason we start on this, on a pencil, is because a pencil is like the same weight across. We're going to assume that it's the same weight across. And all these other type of things. So first of all, let's just dive right into it. I know there's like 5,000 different bow holes, you know, the Franco-Belgian, the Russian bow grip, and the this, and the that, and you should do this one, or you should do that one if you're playing this type of music, and that, 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 that. Just at the moment, I'm not really going to define which bow grip I'm doing. I'm just going to demonstrate, and then you can see what kind of bow grip I do, and then if you like it, you can take it. If you don't like it, then modify it to meet one of the other ones. I'm not going to say, oh, this is the Franco-Belgian bow grip, or this is the Russian, no, this is Holt Manley's bow grip, and this is what I do, and yeah. So let's just get into it. That was enough disclaimer before anyone's like, you're doing this bow grip, and, and, and like angry in the comments or something. I don't know. So. We're gonna have our pencil and we're gonna hold it with the left hand. And the main reason that we're holding it with the left hand is not only to support the right hand, but I think subconsciously, this is teaching our hands that they should help each other and not fight. Like, honestly, on piano, you don't see it on violin as much, but uh, on piano, the hands, like, the better you get, the more independent the hands start getting, in my opinion, and they start fighting each other. And so when you're like doing stuff like this, and the left hand is supporting and helping the right hand learn something, then they kind of learn a little bit better and aren't like fighting as much. I know that that, made, that probably makes no sense if you don't play piano, but anyways. So we're going to put our hand, put our arm up, you know, this would be a great time to, you know, work on that good posture. <laughs> And we're going to make a C with our middle finger. I'll do a little bit closer. We're going to make a C with our um, middle finger on our thumb. Or maybe with these two fingers, right? We're going to have Schweigefox. And it's like something, I don't know. And <laughs> we're going to do this. And then we're going to bring the, our pencil towards it. And then we're just going to open up. And then we're going to put these fingers over. And just do this. And this is like already half, right? And look at our thumb. Our thumb is like this. I'll do it one more time, and so just keep these fingers up in the air if you can. And so we're gonna do that again. We're going to make this C-ish kind of shape, right? Then we're going to open it up and put the fingers over. And if you see by me, I don't know if you can see it efficiently, but I'm kind of like almost on these two knuckles right here from under. If you look at it, I don't know if you can see it efficiently, but those are the lines of the two knuckles. And then now we're going to put the first finger down, right, like this. It should be. Also, like, almost on the second knuckle. And then we're going to put the fourth finger curved. <laughs> this, this curved fourth finger is the, one of the most difficult things for people to learn in the beginning of learning how to hold the bow. And then if you look at my thumb right here, my thumb is not bent. So then we need to bend our thumb. We need to bend our thumb. So that is... My bow grip, sometimes. I, I think my bow grip changes based on what I'm playing. It probably does. I don't really pay that much attention. But so that, that we're going to do that again. So, so, good posture, breathe. <laughs> I need to stop using that word, good posture. Um, 
attentive, attentive posture. There you go, that sounds a lot nicer. Attentive posture. So, breathe. Make this C with um, the ring finger and the middle finger. Bring the bow close. Open up. Go to the second knuckle joint. Second knuckle joint. Then put the one down. And then put your pinky down curved. And then now, you have to bend the thumb. And that gives me my bow hold. I think my bow grip looks, my bow grip looks like Russian, like, I don't know, this bow grip looks like, I'm not even gonna define my own bow grip, okay? It looks different every time. I mean, I don't know, this is just what it looks like to me. And um, now that you kind of understood that, we're just gonna practice bending the thumb, that's it. We don't really care what any of the other fingers are doing at the moment, just bending. And relaxing. Bending. I don't even see that efficiently. And relaxing. I'll do it with just um, these two fingers. So, bend, relax. Bend the thumb, relax the thumb. And I can think about, instead of bending the thumb, I can think about pulling the pencil closer towards us, right? So, I'll do it again. So, like, pulling the pencil closer towards us. All the fingers kind of retract inwards. And then when we want to relax the thumb, then all the other fingers retract outward. So I don't really like the term bending the thumb. Or you pull your thumb towards you, push your thumb away. Pull your thumb towards you, push your thumb away. And just kind of doing that. So those are some of the prep before we even decide to hold a bow. Because um, it's really difficult. We have to train our mind to learn how to hold the bow, right? And to do it subconsciously, because like if I'm just thinking about like, let me pick my bow up. This is my normal bow hold, I guess, right? Yeah, it's pretty close to what I was doing before. And so we're going to just put our bow hold up. I'm not going to go through all the steps again. Uh, you need to go through that yourself. <laughs> I'm not the, uh... yeah. Anyways, <laughs> and so now if you play piano, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. These are the five fingers of our hand, right? So one is, uh, one is the thumb and five is the pinky, right? And so now you can just tell yourself like a finger, right? So I can just be like two and then four and then three and then five and then oh one you need to have your right for, to, to do one you need to have your left hand here But just have your left hand here anyways helping and then one two three four five five four three two one and you can also mix it up and go one, three, two, four, five. And um, we want to make sure that we're not too tense, right? Because we still need to be able to bow and that kind of thing. But at the moment, um, be really careful about the ring finger when you're lifting it up. That um, it doesn't tense, it doesn't have to be as high. Because if you look at all the other fingers, all the other fingers can go extremely high. But the ring finger can't go that high, and we shouldn't be trying to... There's no reason to force your fingers to move anything that's, like, inefficient if it's not efficient, if it doesn't feel right. Again, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong. <laughs> and so just doing that, so... You can, the biggest problem with bow holding is that these two fingers right here are very... Um, there's a muscle... Not a muscle, I don't know what it's called. Um, what is that thing called again? I forgot. There's some sort of, um, I don't remember what it's called. There's some muscle or some, there is some sort of tissue or something in here that connects both of these fingers, right? So the ring finger and the pinky finger. And so for every instrument, it is the most difficult thing to train these fingers to move on their own and I'm less, um, less uh, intertwined with each other, which is, I find to be really difficult. So that's why when we uh, put up our bow, that my teacher used to tell me to do pinky push-ups, so we're going to hold it and go one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Or we can do that with all fingers, right? So we can do this with um we did it with the pinky. Now we can do it with the first finger. So well, I mean second finger, I'm sorry. And so uh, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and one two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And then sometimes you can kind of go a little bit like faster. So um, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then make sure that you kind of um, take a pause sometimes that your hand 
um, doesn't like tense up and um, let's have exactly like I said in that other video if you watch that one if you didn't I'll like maybe put a link or something right here if I figure out how to do that I'm not the most tech savvy person let me write phrases I'm not the most interested in becoming tech savvy let's be honest here and um, so if you do that, um, then you know that you need to have like a certain amount of pause. So again, just like all of these other videos I'm telling you, don't try to rush all of these things. Don't rush them. Just let yourself have the time you need to get everything that I'm trying to tell you or that anyone's trying to tell you to get it done and accomplished. Don't try to rush it because rushing gets you nowhere in music real quick. If you try to get everything done as quick as possible, that's a no-go. That doesn't work. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was uh, a pretty longish video. I hope there was like a lot of good information in there. So I think the next like five or so videos are probably just going to be on nothing but the right hand and what the right hand does to an extent. I guess just like the basics of the right hand because I already did the basics of the left hand. And um, see you tomorrow. <laughs>